morning, everybody. Once again, here at Talking Tax in beautiful downtown Honolulu, in beautiful Hawaii anyway. Uh, I'm Mark Coleman, and I'm the co-host of Talking Tax, this week's Talking Tax episode here on Think Tech Hawaii with Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. I'm with the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, and uh, we both here today are going to talk about the fear of the unknown in the tax world. Uh, actually, over at the legislature, where they fool around with taxes endlessly, year after year. And um, the problem this year, as Tom writes about in his weekly column, uh, as he wrote about in his weekly column recently, um, is that they have apparently, I'm not sure how old this practice is, but they're starting to produce bills. They've already gone through a first or second reading with blanks instead of numbers where there once were numbers. Uh, related to tax increases. So they're proposing bills that now one are suggesting they're going to raise our taxes, but they're not like saying, how, like, by how much. So how do you comment on a bill like that? Tom, what brought this, uh, what, what brought this to your attention? What prompted you to write about this? Well, it's something I've actually I've been writing about for many years now. Oh, so it's a, it's a long going practice. Yeah. At least for, at least for the past five or six years. Um, it, it kind of started with, you know, small things, uh, you know, leaving blanks and appropriations so the amounts could be filled in later. Uh, but now it's kind of getting into uh, tax bills in a way that really makes the, the, the tax bill almost unintelligible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, let's, you know, talk about some concrete examples. Yeah. There, there's a bill... Uh, that's advanced pretty far. It's probably going to pass, called relating to the stabilization of property insurance. And what that what that bill does is uh, it is uh, attempting to increase the transient accommodations tax, increase the conveyance tax, increase the insurance premiums tax, at least in the current version, and you know reinstate a mortgage recording fee. Um, but we don't know by much, by how much because most of the uh, amounts are left blank. Right. Uh, to give you an example, uh, for the conveyance tax, uh, they are proposing in in uh, you know House Bill twenty six eighty six um, a surcharge for uh, sale of properties and. And, and and the bill text goes something like this. Blank percent for properties having a value of less than $600,000. Blank percent for properties having a value of at least 600000 but less than $1 million. Blank percent for properties having a value of at least $1 million, but less than $2 million. Blank percent for properties having a value of at least $2 million, but less than $4 million. And the list goes on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we don't know what the heck is in their mind. Right, right. Uh, and... Uh, and, and and it's kind of becoming a real problem uh, because the more blanks they insert in these bills, uh, the more the more unintelligible it becomes. You know, at some point, you, you don't know whether you're talking about a tax increase or a tax decrease. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it makes it hard to go in and say I support this bill or I don't. Um, to the extent that it might be just a new tax period, and we're just waiting to find out what what how much of an increase it's going to be, that's problematic. But uh, if there's a possibility that it could actually be a decrease of an existing tax, uh, I don't know if that's at play really right now. But well, then you know you'd want to support that no matter what the number is there. At least that we would at the grassroots. Uh, yeah, let me give you another example. This is um, uh, the current version of the Green Affordability Plan. Uh -huh. So um, this, uh, what, what I mean by that is uh, the governor's come in and says, um, you know, we need to support our Alice families, uh, Alice being asset limited, income constrained, and employed, so basically lower, lower to lower middle class. And, uh, um, you know, they came in, to their credit, with a bill that had numbers in it. 
uh, House Draft 1, which came out of House Finance, is the tax shall be blank plus blank percent of, it, of the excess of income over $5,280. Blank plus blank percent of the excess over $10,560. Blank plus blank percent of the excess over $21,120. So each and every one of the tax brackets is replaced with a blank. Uh, so there's blanks for married filing, filing jointly, blanks for head of household, blanks for single. Uh, how do you even talk about this stuff? Mm -hmm. Well, how do they? What, what, I mean, what, you, you're over there a lot uh, in the big square building. Um, um, what, what is your take on why they're doing this so often? Well, number one, uh, they know that the bill cannot be enacted in this form. Okay. Uh, but. So it could be a good thing? Is it, is it, a, is it, is it a subterfuge to try to sabotage the bill? I think it's, it's a, it's a subterfuge to put, to prevent public comment uh -huh. because. Well, yeah. Yeah. Because what I think practically happens is, you know, they wait till the last minute to find out how much uh, revenue impact can go into this bill. Oh, and then, uh, and then they fill in the the um, the numbers uh, in conference committee. Mm -hmm. at, at which point, uh, no public comment is allowed. You pointed so, out in your article that this would violate. If that's true, that that would violate the 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 requirement that a bill has three public hearings. But how can a public hearing where there's no money figures involved? count as a public hearing, right? Yeah, that's, I, I think, uh, the question that has to be asked. I mean, one, we have a constitutional requirement that a, a, a bill be uh, read throughout three times in each house, uh, and that is, uh, at least in theory, to allow uh, for uh, de debate on the bill's contents and for the public to weigh in. Well, how, how can the public weigh in on a bill with a blank? Or lots of blanks, right? You know, fifty to hundred blanks. Yeah. Um, you know, at some point, um, it's it's going to be like uh, what we call the short form bills. Uh, you know, now short form bills are are bills that that say, you know, the purpose of the bill is X. The Hawaii Revised Statutes are amended to to uh, conform to X purpose, and that's a valid bill. Okay, but it, but it, but in practice, what what happens with a short form bill is it gets heard and recommitted uh, to the committee that brings it up for the purpose of inserting substantive provisions. And then the committee hears it again with the substantive provisions inside so they can have public comment. And that's what they're supposed to do, I think. Uh, and I think that's what they should be doing uh, with, with bills that they want to put blanks in. I mean, it's it's really gotten out of hand uh, in, you know, in, in recent years. Uh, you know, they put blanks everywhere. There's, there, the, when you were talking about the, well, about the green fee thing, what, what, the, you're saying that that, excuse me, is there a green fee bill in there? Is that what you were talking about? Or were you talking about the no, green? No, I'm talking about the, the, green, uh, the green affordability plan, which is uh, basically okay. changing okay. the income tax rates. Right, right. And, right. and, and brackets. Right. Um, but we don't know what the what the rates and the brackets are because they're all because yeah, exactly. they're all blank. Yeah. So there's that, and then there's the insurance stabilization, and then apparently there's also they're also doing with uh, doing this with HB two twenty three sixty four, which is the conveyance tax hike, proposing new tiers for conveyance taxes and uh, an entirely new classification for multifamily residential, all of which was blanked out in a later version after initially having fairly substantial tax hikes proposed. Um, which just, again, seems fundamentally unfair. I, you know, it, this makes me think of the practice where they, where they pass a bill that maybe they're not too happy about or maybe they want to think about a little bit more, um, but they just want to pass it for whatever darn reason. And, the, and, and, and instead of saying, you know, shall be effective, you know, December 31st, whatever, the year of, of the current year, um, or, or even July 1st, um, they'll put 
2035 or, or even 3000. There's even bills going through the legislature right now that won't be effective until the year 3000, which is really strange. Um, what kind of tactics are these that, that are going on over there? Is this uh, some kind of a, a way to um, adapt to the um, rulings against um, gut and replace? No, no, that that, that practice has uh, uh, been around for a long time, too. I mean, it's basically a way, and, and we, we call that a defective effective date. Uh, uh -oh, it's yeah. it's, uh -huh. it's a way um, to make sure the bill goes to conference. Oh, uh-huh. Okay, so like if you're the House, you pass the bill with a defective effective date, but uh, because you're, you're not entirely 100% sure that you want to pass it in that form. Oh. But but you want to see what the Senate does and then talk to them about it. Uh -huh. So you pass it with a defective effective date. Uh, the Senate does their thing. Um, and you have the chance, because they've changed it, uh, to take it up with them in conference. Because, you know, as we all know, if you, pla if you pass a clean bill, you send it over to the Senate. The, the Senate thinks it's okay. Uh, uh, and, the, and the Senate doesn't amend it. It goes straight up to the, to the fifth floor to the governor's office, um, so the House doesn't see it again. And so uh, that, I think, is what they wanted to prevent. Oh. Um, they, you know, they wanted to, you know, take one last crack at the bill before it goes up to the fifth floor. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that that is, it may be a little bit problematic, but at least, you know, with a defective effective aid, you can have a, uh, a reasonably intelligent discussion about you know what else is in the bill? Uh, uh, well, but, but with 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 blanks in the key areas, uh, even that is tough. Yeah, I, I checked in with our um, policy director Malia Hill before we we talked here today. Before we joined to talk about this, and she was uh, suggesting that these blanks let the legislature take advantage of the fact that you're not supposed to make any substantial changes to a bill during conference committee hearings because arguably they're just compromising on the amounts. But if the bill went through both one or both houses with a bunch of blanks, are they really just negotiating or are they effectively writing the bill? Yeah, no, I mean, um, at least with the, with the uh, relating to property insurance bill, um, the, the indication that I got from watching the testimony uh, was that they're really not sure how much of a prop oh, up they're going to need. Right. And, and the insurance commissioner really hasn't, you know, tossed out a number. Industry really hasn't tossed out a number. And so, you know, nobody really knows what the final, uh, you know, the final damage is going to be. And, and, and in, in that case, you know, why are they moving the bill? So you're, they're waiting to find out, for example, if um, they're going to get money from one of the relief funds, like the rainy day fund. Um, is that one of the problems you were talking about? Well, I don't I don't think so. What what they are trying to do in that bill is to basically create a like a Hawaii hurricane relief fund. So so insurers can tap into it if they have uh, if they're covering a disaster. Um, and they're going to otherwise lose a whole bunch of money as a result. I mean, well, one thing we put, one, one thing we said about that particular bill um, in our testimony was that um, the, I think it involves a surcharge on the transient accommodation tax. Is that what it was it what it was? Oh, that yeah, it involves that among other things. Yeah, and and that alone, um, and that's blank too. Pardon me. And that's blank too. Oh, 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 yeah, that's blank, too. But also, you know, the, they're like, according to the law, there has to be a nexus between the tax and the use of the money, right? So is is that, would you consider that a fair nexus uh, to be taxing tourism to fund an insurance stabilization program? Uh, I, I don't think there has to be uh, a, a nexus. I mean, it's, people make that argument, but it, it really doesn't have to be there. I mean, you can you can impose a tax for the general operations of government and shuttle the money to the general fund. And that's that's what that's what they do, we do all the time.
But also, wouldn't that be considered somewhat of a special fund if you if you were to tax a particular program, and instead of sending it to the general fund, you're sending it to a, a, an insurance stabilization program? That's what they're saying, right? Yeah, I, I think when you when you um, are creating special funds, there are uh, you know uh, requirements in the in the financial uh, statutes that we have about what constitutes a special fund or when a special fund is allowed. There you do have to have uh, okay. basically a, an argument that the fund's going to be self-sustaining and that the um, uh, the outflows of the fund are going to be you know, somehow related to, the, uh, to what you're taking in. And from where you're taking it in. And yeah. from where you're taking it in. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, that aside, we, we still have this issue of um, running bills through the legislature without money amounts. What do you think should happen in this case? Uh, what, 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 what do you think the future of all this should be? Uh, well, I mean, uh, it took, uh, I think, a courageous uh, couple of organizations to step up, file suit, and end the practice of gut and replace. Yes. Uh-huh. So I, you know, uh, congratulations go to League of Women Voters and Common Cause Hawaii for that. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe somebody's got to come up and you know step up and 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 file suit and and get this before the courts uh, to end the you know the the pernicious practice of blankety blanking. <laughs> yeah, that that sounds like where it has to go unless the legislature could be persuaded, I suppose, to uh, do its own house cleaning. What do you think the chances of that would be? Uh, well, you know, you know, they come they come up with these interesting habits over the years, and uh, uh, you know, some of them are good, some of them are not so good. Like uh, you know, this year they. Uh, apparently got into the habit of inserting into almost every bill uh, with money implications uh, a clause that exceeds the 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 the, the, the um, constitutional spending ceiling right I noticed that uh, and 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 my point about that is why, why do you need that you only need that in one bill every year so and that's what and and that's what they used to uh, you know, provide. Um, what bill would that be? The budget bill, right? It could be the budget bill. Could be something separate. I see. Well, I, I are all these people saying? I know that if you add this little straw to the haystack that, or to the back of the camel's back, it's going to break the it's going to break the camel's back, and then you pile all these on. So, so what difference does it make to say that in there? Do you think? I, I don't think I don't think it makes any sense, really. I mean, yeah. all you need is to, to to pass one bill, and the you know, the money committees were good about passing one bill every year. Um, <clears throat> that then brings up the you know the the, the the second question about you know whether our constitutional spending ceiling um, is being respected, and uh, you well, know we know, it's, we know it's not right. Yeah, uh, it. You know, if this legislators consider it and um, and then take an informed vote, that's one thing. If if they you know routinely vote to break it every year, uh, I, I think it's it's just um, basically in, uh, uh, it, taking advantage of a loophole. That's right. Well, I, 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 clar please clarify for me. I'm not. Sure. Why? Why do that? Why are they saying this in each bill? Um, that that this will, if this bill is passed, it will exceed the budget limit. That yeah, uh, beats me. <laughs> because one bill doesn't do it, right? It's the con it's the combination of all the bills. And so, what you really need is once every all the bills are passed, then you have someone say, "Well, this total is in excess of the state." spending limit now we need to all vote on whether that's good or bad or somebody goes through and line items out things i i don't understand how they, what they yeah think. that that makes a lot more sense um, but that's not how we that's not how we do things here in hawaii <laughs> well i'm looking forward to having uh some groups step up on this too unless 
somebody can propose a constitutional amendment, um, somebody would have the gall, the gall or the courage to submit a constitutional amendment. But similarly, um, that would we should we're, we're talking about we're talking about the blankety blanks, right? That's what we're talking about again. Uh, if somebody would step up and propose that this is not acceptable, this is just totally. For example, we we the Grassroots Institute of Hawaii on this. I think it was the insurance stabilization fund. We just submitted testimony yesterday. I think they're having a hearing today on that bill. Um, that that you know the first time this went through, um, I think we commented on it that we didn't support it because it had it was more taxes, you know, basically, and uh, there's other ways of dealing with it. Um, and now the second round is like, well, geez, um, now we really don't support it because we don't even know what you're talking about anymore you know at the very least put the language back in so that we can figure out what you're talking about you just can't throw out a bill the assumption has to be that you're going to raise taxes and you know it'd be really nice to know by how much and maybe that could cool the just of some people that might be opposed to it but uh, yeah i mean that's that's i think a key uh, a very key point right there um even if you have a bills that you know is a tax increase, you got to know by how much. Uh, some people will say, "Well, it's, it's it's probably okay if it's under a certain amount," you know. But if it's you know, hundred percent, two hundred percent, you know, then then people are going to go hoo hoo, you know. Right, right, right. Are there any legislators uh, that you're aware of that find this practice, you know, weird or you know, reprehensible even? Um, who's who are the reformers that you know we could talk to at the legislature about something like this? Well, uh, I, I, I'm not sure that the reformers would be able to do something given that leadership is, and 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 by leadership I'm talking the powerful committees uh, are, are the ones putting these blanks in. Yeah, let's see which committees are we here we're talking. Oh, do you think it was the committee that's sharing these today that that did that or? Like this is committee on ways and means and Senate committee on judiciary. Now, was it? Do you think it was people in those committees that did that, or was it the committee that heard them previously? Well, over? well, in in House Bill two four zero four, the uh, the committee that put you know a jillion blanks in the bill is House Finance. Oh, uh huh. Um, and <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to you know single out any committee in particular because. It's a, it's a widespread practice on both sides of the aisle. It's become ingrained. So That's what do you do about problem. something like that? It's I, a problem. I, you know, I, at the grassroots, we we have you know, our paying attention as closely as you have been for so long is more of a recent phenomenon. We we've really ramped up our paying attention to what's going on at the legislature only in the last few years in terms of specific bills and submitting lots of testimony. And so I had never noticed that. Prior and I and I'll bet money that most people have no idea that this is going on all the time too. Um, so this has been a real educational for me to see it, and it and it certainly strikes. I wonder if the thousand friends and and the League of Women Voters know that this is going on. And, you know, this might be their next. Maybe this should be their next. Uh, and maybe what kind of awards could we? You remember the rusty bucket, the rusty uh, scalpel. scalpel award. Yeah, maybe the what would the, be the equivalent here? Um, the missing calculator <laughs> award. <laughs> yeah, the, in, the incomplete award. Oh yes, that's right. That was the uh, title yeah. of the episode. Even the title of your column was "Fear of the Unknown," which uh, you know makes it all kind of spooky. But uh, the 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 title of the episode on the screen was uh, uh, the incomplete. Legislative bills, yeah, there you go. Um, so, moving forward, how do you we how what do we do about how do we what do we say when we go to testify on these bills? We, in our in our case, we we said uh, you know basically please put the language back in. We can't really talk about it. We had a headline on one of our testimonies that so we can't we can't comment on this anymore. We don't know what you're talking. You know, we don't know what the numbers are. Um, what do yeah, you? Yeah, I mean. Uh, legislative committees and the public ask all the time, you know, what's the revenue impact of the bill, right? Right. And you can't give one if the numbers are not there. 
Uh, uh, did you submit testimony on this bill, um, Tom? Uh, yes, we did. And what did you say? Pardon me for not knowing. Have, pardon me for not uh, having it at hand. But what did you say? Um, no, we we uh, we talked about uh, that the you know the the brackets, the income tax brackets in current law. Uh, many of them have been in place since the '60s, and uh, you know inflation has done a lot since then, and 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 now uh, the uh, the the tax brackets, you know, at the low end, are you know what you've got two two or three different tax brackets for income under ten thousand mm. dollars. I mean, it's meaningless. When money made when when money used to mean something. Yeah, I mean today those brackets are meaningless. So why why have them in the code? I mean, it just makes life more complicated for everybody. But they didn't take them out of the code. There, but and and they've added more brackets or something, right? So, yeah. So now we have like twelve or thirteen total, yeah. which is I think one of the most complex in the country. Yeah, I think it will be uh, if that happens. Well, it looks like the legislature. Um, needs uh, needs to be revamped a little bit in what they do if they want to be fair to the public uh, would you know in terms of being able to comment on legislation that might be affecting their lives any last word Tom we got 15 seconds blankety blank <laughs> that's right well thank you very much Tom Good talking with you again. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. I hope that you learned something and that maybe you can do something about it because it was something sounds like something that needs to be fixed. Um, to everybody out there, thank you very much again. If you like this show, hit the hit the like button, and uh, we'll see you at least one more time. We hope and here right here at Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, everybody. Have a great day. want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.